Today I'll be doing a One Piece character breakdown list, and this one will be for Luffy, the main character of the series, One Piece. I'll be talking about his powers, his personality, where he's from, and just about everything you should or may already know about the character. So with that out of the way, let's begin. So his full name is Monkey D. Luffy. His pirate name is Straw Hat Luffy, or some just call him Straw Hats. His goal slash dream is to become King of the Pirates. The one who inspired Luffy to have this dream is Shanks of the Red-Haired Shanks Pirates, who Luffy met when he was seven years old in his hometown. Luffy is from Fusha Village, also known as Windmill Village, which is part of the Goa Kingdom on Dawn Island in the East Blue. When the series debuted, Luffy was seven years old in Chapter 1, and he also goes from seven years old to 17 years old in Chapter 1, and he's 17 years old from Chapter 1 to Chapter 597. And from Chapter 598 to the present, he is currently 19 years old. His birthday is on May 5th, which is also Children's Day, which does play a part in his personality as he is a childlike character. His height is 172 centimeters, which is 5 foot 7 inches and a half at the pre-time skip. And then after time skip, he's 174 centimeters, which is 5 foot 8 and a half. Now I'm going to talk about Luffy's association with other people and affiliations. So he's the captain of the Straw Hat Pirates and the Straw Hat Grand Fleet and is currently a part of the Ninja Pirate Mink Samurai Alliance and is part of the Worst Generation. His known family members are Monkey D. Dragon, who is his father and a revolutionary, his grandfather, Monkey D. Garp, who's a marine hero and a vice admiral, and his sworn brothers, Porcus the Ace, also known as Gold the Ace, whose, whose pirate name is Fire Fist Ace and is part of the Whitebeard Pirates, and his other sworn brother, who is Sabo, and is second in command of the Revolutionary Army. We haven't been introduced to Luffy's mom yet. We haven't even got a hint of her. That I'm pretty sure Luffy hasn't said mom or anyone has said the word mom to him in the entire series so far. So hopefully we get something about that later. But as of right now, we know nothing about his mom or who she is or what she was doing. Luffy also considers Dadan a part of his family because she took care of him as he was growing up in a mountain right near his home village. One of Luffy's biggest beliefs is that the person with the most freedom in the whole sea becomes King of the Pirates, which is what he said to Rayleigh in Chapter 500 and Episode 400 of One Piece. Another thing Luffy believes in is that putting his life on the line is for, for a friend is just something you should do. It's like a natural instinct for Luffy to put his line on the line for his friend, which we saw in Alabasta in the case where he barely knew Vivi. He spent about a month or two traveling with her, and was willing to risk his life and his entire crew life just to save her home country. Luffy has an extremely gluttonous nature. Like, he has an extremely huge appetite at that, too. So big that if he eats enough food, he can become driven and determined to do things that he probably couldn't do before. Not to mention, it makes him stronger. because of his, And because of his rubber body, he can eat as much as he wants. And because of his fast metabolism, he doesn't even have to worry about gaining the weight. A lot of Luffy's greatest victories have food as a result of them, or, ha or he's eaten a lot of food before them. An example of, of afterwards is after he defeated Crocodile, he slept for three days straight, and, and as soon as he woke up, he was able to calculate that he missed 15 meals. So this guy eats five meals a day. You could probably say that the amount of food Luffy eats all the time is one of his greatest feats as well. Another example of Luffy eating a lot of food is after his battle with Magellan and Impel Down, he devoured a ton of food and his body gained all the weight and he brought it back to normal size almost in immediately. Luffy has also been able to use food to his advantage in a fight because when he fought Cracker, he was using Cracker's own power against him because Cracker had the biscuit, biscuit fruit and Luffy just ate all the biscuits that he created and combined it with his fourth gear to create a new form which he used against Cracker to win. For the next part of this character breakdown, let's talk about Luffy's bounties. Luffy got his first bounty while he was in the East Blue, which was 30 million berries after defeating pirates Buggy, Captain Kuro, Don Krieg, and the Marine Axan Morgan, not to mention Arlong. Luffy got his second bounty of 100 million berries, which was first revealed in Chapter 213 after defeating Crocodile, 
in Alabasta. Luffy got his third bounty by challenging the world government and by defeating Rob Lucci at Eni's lobby. Luffy got his fourth bounty of 400 million berries after punching a world noble and facing off against Magellan and Impel Down while breaking in and getting out to rescue Ace, then taking part in the Paramount War, also known as the Battle of the Best, or just mar marine forward by fans. And he got his fifth bounty, which is his current bou bounty of 500 million berries after defeating yet another warlord, Doflamingo, Andres Rosa. Now let's talk about Luffy's defining moments. Luffy has a lot of moments that just set him above most characters that we know, and moments that just show, shows us what type of a person he is. Not only as a character, as an anime character, but as a person in the One Piece world itself. Some, he does things some people wouldn't even think of doing, which makes him a very interesting and fun character. What he doesn't have in brain, he makes up with strength, or is just driven by his own beliefs. One of Luffy's first few defining moments to me was when he stood up to Arlong back at Arlong Park. Arlong was the strongest man in the East Blue at the time, and Luffy did it because he wanted to fight for Nami, and at the time he barely knew Nami, which just makes it so much of a defining moment because he's willing to fight with his life on the line for someone he doesn't really know all that well. And then afterwards, later on in Alabaster, when he first defeated Crocodile, one of the seven warlords of the sea, and what makes this um, like one of One Piece's most defining moments, not just for Luffy, just, just as in One Piece as a whole, Luffy went up against Crocodile, one of the seven warlords of the sea, a Logia type, and at the time he didn't have hockey or any real way of fighting back. So first he tried water and that didn't and it was working until Crocodile figured out how to absorb it. But then Luffy decides to fight with his own blood and, and since he realized that's gonna work, he defeats Crocodile fighting with his own blood on his hands. And not to mention this was for Vivi's country. And he had no benefit to gain for fighting in this battle aside from the fact that his friend's home country would be saved. And it was after this moment that Luffy first got the attention of the world government. Another defining moment, more towards the middle of the first half of the Grand Line, is when Luffy decided not to fight back against Bellamy in the bar. Even though it would have been very in character for him, he didn't because he remembered what Shanks taught him, back, which is what we saw back in episode 1, where Shanks didn't want to fight back against those guys because they didn't do anything to hurt his friends. It was only after Bellamy attacked Cricket that Luffy decided to fight back against him. And later in the Water 7 saga, he directly challenged the world government and CP9 because they took Robin away from him. And to further anger the world government later on, Luffy decided that he would punch a celestial dragon in a face, one of the rulers of the One Piece world, and that's, some, that's a scene no one is going to forget for a long time. That was probably one of the most satisfying punches in all of One Piece. That and when Luffy decided to punch Arlong back at Arlong Park. And like I talked about earlier when I told you how Luffy got his bounty, he, after he punched a Celestial Dragon in the face, he becomes separated from his friends on Sabodi Archipelago, and then he finds out Ace is going to be executed, and he breaks into Impel Down, the world's strongest prison, held with the world's strongest prison warden, and all the most dangerous criminals in the world, all for Ace. He gets down to level 6, where Ace is, in the most impenetrable prison in the entire world, he gets in there, but Ace isn't there, and he manages to break out even after being poisoned. Then that's followed by him taking part in the battle at Marine Ford. And the fact that Luffy was able to escape both of these just shows you his willpower in itself. So throughout the history of One Piece, Luffy has been known for challenging the Shib Shishibukai, also known as the Seven Warlords of the Sea, and recently he's challenged Big Mom on Fishman Island for Fishman Island. And then he challenged Big Mom on her island for Sanji. And he's even challenged Kaido indirectly due to his alliance with Law. And one of my personal favorite, one of Luffy's most defying moments is when he was at Marineford. And Whitebeard was telling him he isn't ready for this war because he would get slaughtered. And he just stands up to him and says that Ace is his brother so he's going to do whatever he wants. And that he's going to be the Pirate King. And Whitebeard was the strongest man in the world at that time. And Luffy knew it. He knew it. And he was Ace's captain. But he said that to him anyway. That's not something any like people do. 
I don't even think another Yonko would stand up to Whitebeard and say that they're the strongest in front of him. Then in one of my all-time favorite moments in all of One Piece, I'm pretty sure most fans have it as at least in their top five too, is when Luffy stood up to the three admirals at Marine Ford. There are lots of moments in One Piece. One Piece is a great series, but that is one of those legendary moments in One Piece you won't forget. This is what's going to be in the history books. When people bring up Marine Ford later in the series, they're definitely going to remember this. Luffy standing up to the three admirals all in front of him at the exact same time. No one in the entire One Piece world would dare do that unless they were Whitebeard. Or at least another Yonko. But Luffy wasn't either of them. He was just a rookie who just got to this part of the Grand Or he just got to the end of the Grand Line. And he's already challenging the Navy admirals for his brother. If that doesn't tell you what kind of a person he is, nothing will. Next, I want to talk about Luffy's powers and abilities. So Luffy has a lot of powers and abilities, so much to the point where I can make another video just talking about it. But I'll just go over his most iconic, or rather his most used abilities, and the ones that you may want to know more about or already know about. So Luffy has amazing physical strength and immense dexterity, which are a result of his grandfather's bizarre training methods as a child, like throwing him into a ravine. He also trained with Ace and Sabo as a child. Since Luffy ate the gum gum fruit, he has the ability to stretch and expand, which gives him the ability to use gear transformations, second gear, third gear, and fourth gear, or gear fourth, whichever way you prefer to say it. And each one of Luffy's gears has a different ability somewhat. Second gear increases strength, speed, and mobility and was first introduced in his battle with Blue Nail. The technique involves speeding up his blood flow in all or select areas of his body and then providing them with oxygen and nutrients which makes him faster and more powerful. But its drawbacks are that he uses more energy which means he has to eat more food to replenish his strength. This mode also enhances Luffy's physiology, giving him the ability to use new or stronger sets of moves, which are usually just the same but faster, and he, he developed this technique after battling CP9 and watching them use Soru. Luffy can also enhance his attacks with hockey using attacks like Gum Gum Red Hawk, which is an enhanced version of Gum Gum Jet Pistol, which creates a fiery explosion even underwater, and its, and its kanji name is actually... Is actually he can do, which pays tribute to Ace's he can, which is also his fire fist or his fire fist gun. We first see Luffy use this attack in 3D2Y and then again against Hordy on Fishman Island underwater. Another one of Luffy's attack modes or gears is third gear, in which he pumps air through his bones to make him huge, which was first hinted at at the battle with Bruno pre time skip, and it has a drawback of turning Luffy small. Free time skip. Now he has full mastery over this mode. And Luffy's latest and newest mode is Gear 4 or 4th Gear, and this technique is where he coats his arm in Bushoku Haki and then bites into his forearm like he does in 3rd Gear, and then he inflates his muscular structure with emphasis on its upper half instead of just one part like in 3rd Gear. In 4th Gear, his defensive capabilities are way stronger than in 3rd Gear. And depending on his situation, Luffy can adapt 4th gear into different forms. Recently in chapter 842 and episode 806 in his battle against Cracker, he developed a new 4th gear form, which was his Tank Man, which he used to defeat Cracker. And a bit of trivia is that Luffy, free time skip, he can only use certain second gear on his whole body. Now he can do it on any part of his body. And Luffy is the only Devil Fruit or Paramecia type Devil Fruit user that we've seen that can only transform one part of his body, which is so far has only been done by Zoan type users. Second Gear is also similar to the Kaioken from Dragon Ball, as in both forms take the, bo the, the body's user to the absolute limit in speed and power. And, and the last bit of trivia is that Luffy has some only anime only attacks for Second Gear, like Jet Bazooka, which he used in the Z Ambition arc and Jet Cannon, which he used against Don Jinjao. There are even some attacks in the video games that Luffy hasn't used in the anime or manga at all, like Gum Gun Red Hawk Gatling. I really wish we can see that in the anime or the manga, but we probably won't, because an attack like that that he used, that he named after his brother, isn't going to be used unless like it's absolutely necessary. 
but I don't see Oda taking an idea from a video game, even though it would have been cool. But I feel like the anime could do it. Unless Oda gave them the idea to do it, Red Hawk Gabbling, we probably won't be seeing it in the manga or the anime. Next, I want to talk about Luffy's ability to use hockey. Luffy can use all three types of hockey, them being observation hockey, the ability to sense someone's presence, Artemis hockey, which is the power to coach yourself in armor, and Conqueror's hockey, which is the power of intimidation, where you can overpower the will of others who have a weaker will than you. The first example of Luffy doing this is when he used it against Motobara on Sabori Archipelago, and then later in Marine Ford. After the time skip, Luffy has complete mastery, or it looks like he nearly has mastery, of these abilities. In the very least, he can use them well enough. And as we know, Conqueror's Hockey is something only one in a million people can have. And it was stated by Don Chin Chow that Luffy will have to battle other users of Conqueror's Hockey if he wants to become the Pirate King. Next, I want to talk about the voice of all things. It's never been directly stated, but it seems that Luffy has the ability to hear the voices of creatures. The first time we get an example of this is during a filler arc on Warship Island in the East Blue, where Luffy can hear the voice of Ryu, the dragon that was on the island. And then later on Fishman Island, when the Sea Kings come to save the Noah, and one of them thinks that Luffy can hear them, and then thinks back to Goldie Roger, and says that Gold Roger can hear them too, could hear them too. And later in Zo, Lu only Luffy and Momonosuke could hear the voice of Zo itself when it was talking. Other than that, we haven't really got much about it, and I'm pretty sure Oda's going to save it and explain it for later. It was also said that Gold Roger could hear the voice of the Poneglyphs, which is how he kind of read them. So I'm guessing Luffy may develop this ability too, but maybe not because Robin can already read the Poneglyphs, so Luffy won't really have any incentive to go ahead and read them unless he has to at one point. Next, I want to talk about Luffy's fighting style. Luffy is really skilled at fighting, like he's really skilled in hand-to-hand -hand combat, and unlike Zoro and Sanji, he doesn't follow any code of honor, so he will attack women, animals, anything. He's attacked Vivi, well, he's punched Vivi, and then he's hit Alvita and sent her flying. He's also used Buggy as a shield and tied up his body and got rid of it, which led to Buggy's adventures. Luffy also relies on instinct, which is another advantage that he has. Because when he faced Enaru on Sky Pia, Enaru was first reading his attacks easily, but then Luffy started attacking at random, so Enaru couldn't do anything about it. Another advantage he has while fighting is his unpredictability and improving while he's fighting. So, when I say improving while he's fighting, I don't mean powering up, I mean coming up with creative and unusual attacks to hit his enemy, and sometimes they wonder if He's taking the fight seriously. When he faced Crocodile, he became Mizu or Water Luffy, and Crocodile just thought it was a joke. And later when he fought Doflamingo in fourth gear, Doflamingo just laughed when he first saw it. During his childhood, Luffy became used to using a staff as Sabo and Ace would use one too. And we also see him kind of use this during the series, like when he picks up a broken mask to attack Laboon. And also when he faced off against the three admirals, he also uses the mask from a ship and tries to throw it at them. But we haven't really seen him pick up a staff and actually start battling with them. We have seen him pick up swords to defend himself with. Other than that, we haven't really seen him use any type of weapons. Next, I want to talk about Luffy's tactical ingenuity. While Luffy may be a simple-minded character, he can also be a strategic genius, which is very common among some shonen series. He's smart enough to understand the fundamentals of his Devil Fruit powers, seeing as how he knows his strengths and weaknesses. When he battles Enaru, he doesn't run from his attacks because he knows Enaru's made out of lightning. And when he faces people who have swords or sharp objects, he avoids them completely. And a huge example of his tactical ingenuity is when he realized Magellan's poison didn't work on Mr. Three's wax, so he had Mr. Three create wax boxing gloves and leg armor to fight against him so that Jinbei can go and steal a warship. And later in the series, he took advantage of Law's devil fruit powers to fool Doflamingo, a cunning warlord, into getting hit by Luffy's attack. So Luffy basically fooled Doflamingo into thinking that he was going to attack Law, and then Law switched places with him and Doflamingo, and he ends up punching Doflamingo square in the face. And now I want to talk about Luffy's weaknesses. Luffy, his greatest weakness is probably him and his simple-mindedness. 
Luffy is a very trusting person and is very susceptible to any form of hypnosis, like Django's powers and Mrs. Goldenweave's like color trap back in Whiskey Peak. We also saw that when he first saw Chopper transform, he just stopped everything he was doing and looked impressed. And then when he saw Sonny's cannon, he also stopped and looked at that too. And then in the heat of battle, when he first saw the pacifista during Sabo de Archipelago the first time, he just stops what he's doing. Even though like his crewmates are hurt and he's like and they're all falling, he just he's just impressed with the cannon, which is definitely a major weakness of his. Another one of Luffy's like weaknesses, or I guess it's more of an ongoing gag, is his inability to do chores. Because back on Baratia, he he, they, he was told to wash dishes, but just broke everything. So I'm I'm guessing that's more towards a gag than a weakness. But whenever Luffy does get to an island, someone always has to go with him because he's going to get lost, kind of like how Zoro does, or get them into some sort of trouble. And his last weakness I want to point out is that he can't really recognize people when they're in disguise. Like Usopp, when he was in disguise as Sniper King, which you could say is also just a running gag, but I think he really didn't know that was Usopp. There's also the fact that he has no sense of direction. And the last thing I want to talk about for, the, for Luffy's character breakdown video is his luckiness. Luffy has a history of having really good luck. Some people to point this out are El, like Smoker, Eldar Noy, and Ivanko. Sanji even pointed out that it might have been divine intervention when he was about to be executed by Buggy in Logtown and lightning came down and stopped him. He was also able to get away from the Marines at, during this time because of a freak storm and Dragon showing up to save him. Other examples of him defeating Rob Lucci, who he was supposedly supposed to have no chance against, and him defeating Moria before sunrise, and then him getting sent towards the island of women when Kuma sent him flying, an island where everyone hates, where all the women hate men, and he got Boa Hancock, who hates men, to fall in love with him and take him to Impel Down. And while at Impel Down, he, bro he managed to break in and then survived Magellan's poison, even though he had a 0% chance of survival, and there was no antidote, and he broke out of Impound Down with the help of former enemies like Crocodile. Then there was the fact that the Gates of Justice just happened to open for him when he got to Marine Ford, and that when he got to Marine Ford and the ship was falling out of the sky, his ship just happened to land in the spot where there was no ice left. There's also the fact that he survived the battle with Marine Ford and that Law came in time to save him and escaped Aokiji's ice. And then he f then later in Just Rosa, he found someone to take on Ace's will, that being Saba who came back. Then there was him defeating Doflamingo and stopping the birdcage before it could kill everyone. And then meeting Reiju who removed a venomous poison from him which could have killed him. And most recently, Jinbei coming to free Luffy and Nami, who was locked inside Big Mom's castle. Some of these, some of you might call it plot convenience, but I don't think so. I'm pretty sure Oda is foreshadowing something that has to do with Luffy's luckiness. Because it's even said that he might have been born under a star, which is, which is a figure of speech for lucky people. But I'm pretty sure Luffy has a destiny with all this luck coming to him. And we'll probably find out what it is later on in the New World. And the fact that he doesn't even have enough strength to face off against any of the emperors yet, he's going to have to be lucky if he's going to make it through this. Then there's the fact that he has to face Kaido afterwards, who is, who's known as the world's strongest creature. So it doesn't look like Luffy's luck, lucky spree is going to end anytime soon. So that was everything I had to say, or everything you should know or already know about Straw Hat Luffy or Monkey D. Luffy the Pirate. I plan on doing this for other One Piece characters too. I'm not sure who I'll do next, maybe Nami or Sanji after the Whole Cake Island arc finishes. But let me know who you guys want me to do next in the comment section below. This was my first character breakdown video, so be sure to let me know if I forgot anything or should add anything for next time. I could have added more, especially where his powers and attacks were mentioned, but that would have just made the video extra long. I think I may just make a video talking about that later on. But if you enjoyed this video, be sure to like, subscribe, and share the video with somebody who also enjoys One Piece. Thanks for watching, and bye.